Alrighty, folks, I am so excited for today. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. My name is Voodoo Val, and I am going to be your instructor yet again for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. We are going to do some cool designs today. We're going to learn about the ocean. We're going to talk about the Create Waves campaign. We're going to be doing so many cool things. Beat you to the same <laughs> comment? Yeah, let's do this. Let's do it, guys. Um, all right, I see so many familiar faces in the chat. I see Steve, General Kenobi, hello there. Um, Sean, uh, Ted, uh, what's up, Ke uh, Kevin, Jack, I see, oh, two, two Jacks, two Jacks in the chat today. What, what? Uh, the infamous Mr. Sam Peterson. Susan, Jess, how you doing, girl? Uh, Sin Lagos, good to see you. Nick, Paula, Frank. Uh, Fairy, Jennifer, Norish, it's so good to see you. Uh, if you're wondering who I'm saying hello to because you don't see them in the chat, you are probably over on the YouTube chat. So please come over to behance.net slash live because that is where the party's happening. That's where you folks are gonna get all the helpful links from our moderators. Um, and it is where I am uh, checking out the chat. And I would love to talk with you. I would love for you to say hi. I would love to meet you. Um, if we have not met already, please come over. Um, Ralph, good to see you. All right, so I'm gonna dive into it because we got a lot of stuff to cover today. Um, I hope everyone can hear me all right. Um, if that is not the case, please let me know. Serious party chat for sure, absolutely. So today we are going to be working on challenge number four. Challenge number four, and I'm gonna pull up this page right quick so that you folks can see what it looks like. If you'd like to get involved with the daily creative challenge with me, all you have to do is go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, and you can scroll down on this page and see all of the challenges that have been unlocked so far. We've done mood boards, we've done informational promos, we've done illustrations of sea creatures, and today we were going to be doing the colors and depth challenge, challenge number four. Uh, create a diagram of the ocean's layers, choose a color palette, uh, and then experiment with ways to visually depict depth, depict depth within water columns. So we are not only going to be making some interesting uh, little graphs and diagrams today, but we are also going to be talking talking about the ocean's depth specifically because it's a really, really cool thing. And if you've been watching these challenges, then you know that I am trying to uh, kind of give you guys some cool ocean facts every time we do these. So we're gonna be diving into that today. Also, I'd like to highlight that we have a Discord. Um, I am really tiny on this screen. Why? Why am I like that? There we go. Um, I could be, I could just be, hello everyone. Welcome to the Daily Creative Challenge. Um, if you go to bit.ly slash PS Discord, you will find yourself in a super nifty place where you can find all kinds of helpful things, uh, make some new friends, get some help for mentors. Uh, and I am going to pull that up real quick because I have actually placed a freebie in there for you folks uh, just this morning. Uh, I had a, had a cool idea that I thought you folks might like to see and might like to be able to utilize yourselves. So I am going to pull up the Discord right here. Let me pull this over here. Let's jump over. This is the Discord. You can jump in here to the challenge page, the challenge channel, and you can post all of your awesome submissions. We've been getting so many excellent submissions from people coming in here and sharing all of their illustrations, sharing all of their promos, all the stuff they've been doing. Um, Susan, you posted this, by the way, I just want to, I'm going to call you out real quick. You posted this, by the way, and you were like, I'm not an illustrator. And I'm thinking, how are you not an illustrator? Because I'm looking clearly at an illustration of a crab. I love this crab. I think you should be proud of this crab. I hope that you are. Um, well done. Um, but I have illustrated some manta rays. And since we're making diagrams today, I have also illustrated for you a clownfish. I have also posted all of my manta rays in here for you folks and feel free, I've pinned them. You folks can come in here and download them and use them for your project uh, today if you would like. You can also come up here to these pinned messages and you can see all the stuff that I've pinned as well as all of the case study pro tips that I've been posting throughout the challenges. So if you're looking to make a case study for yourself and you're not sure how to go about that, there's some cool information in there for you. But 
without further ado, we should uh, we should probably jam on this challenge, don't you think? I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm getting pretty pumped. Um, so we're creating a diagram of the ocean's layers, and I'm going to show you folks uh, a quick and easy way to uh, kind of add some color, add some interesting gradients and things to make a diagram look a little more interesting. And then uh, we are going to try and populate our graphic with um, some images of fish that may live at certain certain depths, just to give it a little more uh, unique flair. Um, and why we do that, I'm gonna give you some ocean facts. Are you guys ready for ocean facts? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna dive into this. Um, I have supplied you folks with helpful links, fonts, colors, stock images, where you can get free fonts, free colors, free images, um, if you would like to supplement your um, workspace or your workflow with some cool images. You can also, oh, before I, before I forget, I'm gonna post this Create Waves link into the chat because that is where you can download the toolkit um, and learn a little bit more about the Create Waves campaign that is going on right now because I also have a, um, a uh, CC library here with a whole bunch of assets that you can also use for today's challenge that are free to use so long as you are using them for this uh, project for create waves, um, create change, create waves. Um, okay. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and hide this. I'm going to make myself a new, uh, new layer with control shift in it would be command shift in. If you were on your keyboard, by the way, I got all of my stuff sorted out from yesterday. I kind of lost, uh, the ability to use my, um, my, uh, hotkeys yesterday, unfortunately and I needed to restart my Photoshop. Um, so I'm just gonna drop this warm sandy color in here. Uh, I'm gonna press F on my keyboard to go into a uh, second Photoshop viewing mode so that I can kind of move my canvas around um, however I want to position it while I work. And now I am actually going to start doing a diagram of the ocean depth. And I have some reference up for me because, listen y'all, I'm an, I'm an artist. <laughs> But when it comes to maps and diagrams and all that stuff, I do need a little help. Um, I could draw a map for you, but I can't can't really label it for you. Uh, so I hope that you are cool with me kind of glancing over at some reference because I want to make sure this is accurate. So um, I am going to grab, um, we've used the pen tool a little bit in challenges so far, but you could use the pen tool for this as well. You could also come up to the lasso and use the polygonal lasso tool, which is a lasso tool that is just very... Um, rigid like this. In fact, maybe we'll do that. I think actually we will we will do this. We're going to use the um, polygonal lasso tool today. Um, if you can't find that when you press L on your keyboard to access your lasso tool, it is probably underneath here. So all you have to do is right click it and select polygonal lasso tool. I, is it is it polygonal or polygonal? I don't know. How do you, like opacity, opacity, potato, potato? I'm not sure. Um, all right. So on a new layer, control shift in or command shift in for all of you Apple folks, um, I am going to grab a darker color than this. I'm gonna grab like a kind of a brown um, and I am going to quickly kind of uh, draw out some different ways that the ocean floor sort of sits. So, and then I'm gonna label them and I'm going to tell you about each layer, ha ha. So I am going to kind of come out here, like this, this is like the shoreline, you know, we have, we have our shoreline uh, where you can walk out on the beach and all that good stuff. Um, but the thing is, as you start getting further and further out, this starts getting really, really deep until it just kind of sits like so you know, until we just have this big scoop, you know? Um, and then what we have um, are some really, really interesting, super, super deep places. Now I'm not going to um, get super extra detailed with this because there's a lot of stuff that I actually kind of want to do with you guys today. So I'm going to leave it at this. I'm going to go ahead and, and leave it like this. This is going to be my shape for my ocean floor. Um, like so, and I am gonna grab a paint bucket tool and I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in, boom. Um, and now I'm gonna tell you what all of this means. Let me control D to deselect so I have this. And on a layer between these two, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start making um, some, uh, some, some levels, some lines here, okay? 
uh, and I'm gonna grab my line tool I'm gonna pop myself over to the other side of my screen so you can see I'm gonna come over here to my shape tool um, and I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna grab my line tool uh, so I can come in here and I can draw myself some lines um, and I should be able to kind of crank this up yeah there we go let's crank it up let's make this let's make this black for now um, Can we make that black? Oh, we don't want a stroke. Let's take the stroke off. Or, no, oh, let's 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 leave the stroke on because it's gonna give us a nice thick line. Okay, um, and I'm gonna crank this down just slightly, and I'm gonna start placing these lines um, in places that are gonna kind of divide up our our levels of the ocean here. Okay, and then we're gonna label them. So we've got this one here. I'm gonna pull this out. Boom, boom. There's our little upper level it's very tiny it's a tiny level okay right there um, I'm hitting control or command J to duplicate this by the way I'm gonna kind of go I think let me make sure I'm gonna go to like right here boom and then I'm gonna control J again I'm gonna drop this down to mm, maybe right about here and then I'm gonna make one more Okay, so we're getting some some ocean levels in here and it looks a little bit lame, but we are going to spice this up. I promise. Okay, um, so now what are all what do all of these mean? <laughs> okay, so this up here is going to be our um, our our sky. So I'm going to grab a nice blue. I'm going to come in here to my uh, to my colors here and I'm going to just grab a rectangle tool and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a nice blue that is not blue there is blue okay uh, because that is our, our our above sea level okay but the first level of our ocean um, is actually called the epipelagic zone I believe which is known as the sunlight zone a lot of sunlight kind of peeks through uh, the the ocean um, at this level and so I'm going to just snag I'm gonna duplicate this rectangle I'm gonna shrink it down and I'm gonna drag it right here. Let me make sure that these are underneath our lines. I'm actually going to group these lines together so I can collapse it into a group with Control G um, and then they'll be separate. And I'm going to change the color of this, uh, of this blue. So there's a lot of sunlight that comes through here, a lot of cool, interesting creatures that you can see from the surface um, kind of in this stage. Um, and then right after that, we have, and I'm looking at my notes here to make sure I pronounce these words, <laughs> we have the uh, mesopelagic zone, which is the twilight zone. It's starting to get a little bit darker, okay? So we are gonna bump this down. Control J to duplicate this, Control T to transform. I'm gonna kinda bump that right here. And we're gonna change this to a, a darker color because it's starting to get spookier, okay? It's starting to get a little bit darker. Let me pull, let me, let me grab. Mm, yeah, let's do this one. Um, and then I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to drag this down. Uh, and this next one is called the Bathy, Bathypelagic, I hope that I'm pronouncing that right, um, and that is known as the Midnight Zone. So we are going to make this even darker, even darker, even darker. Things are getting spoopy in here, okay? Uh, control J, Control T, we're gonna kind of bump this down, make something even darker. The next one, I don't care what anybody says, the next zone, the next level of the ocean is my favorite hands down simply because of the name we're gonna make this a little bit darker if we can okay maybe yeah we'll put it at like right here um and the next one is called the abyssopelagic zone otherwise known as the abyss which i think is horrifying but also awesome because some of the coolest looking creatures come from the abyssal zone um, and then finally uh we are going to come down in here um, and this is going to be much darker. We do like, uh, let's sample this and then let's actually color pick kind of a darker color here. Let's do something like that. There we go. Um, okay, so now we have all these different layers and this final one um, is called the uh, Hadal Pelagic Zone, which is known as the trenches because the ocean has these huge deep gouges spread out um, out in the, in the 
vast space of the ocean um, and some of them are very 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 deep and we don't know what's down there we don't know what's down there uh, there is a lot of the ocean that has yet to be explored and there are some pretty crazy spaces um, uh, down there that are are unknown to us completely um, so I am going to I might actually change the color I'm of, of this I'm going to I'm just gonna grab my um, paint bucket tool. I'm going to select this and I'm actually going to change this to maybe something like that. And we're going to maybe get a little bit fancy um, with some gradients or some textures. Okay. Um, and we're going to come in with some text and start to label these. Okay. So I'm going to real quick, I'm going to create a new layer. Um, and I like to do kind of a, a clipping mask for these to add in textures to things. Clipping masks are my bread and butter. Um, you can come in to the layer, double clicking it and opening the layer style panel if you want to come and add texture to it. That's another way that you could do it. If you've got a texture um, in here that you would prefer to use, I've got a bunch of patterns and things that I've created. That's actually cool. That's a that's a floral texture I made for a previous thing. And you know what? If we scale that up, it doesn't look like floral. It looks like sand. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Gonna do it. All right. Um, and then we can use the clipping mask to add a little bit of gradient. So I'm going to come in uh, with my gradient tool, which is behind my paint bucket tool. And I am going to select a color that's maybe a little bit darker. Um, and I am going to just go ahead and drag this out. Actually, I want to, I think I want to select our regular. You can come up here to the top and you can see a bunch of different kinds of, um, of gradients. You have like a linear gradient, you have the radial gradient, you have the angular gradient, the reflective gradient, and the diamond gradient. And I typically like to use um, the linear gradient is, is kind of kind of my jam. I kind of like this because it adds a little bit of texture to this. Um, this is just on a normal layer that I've placed this and it is giving me a really nice effect. I'm going to come back into this bevel and emboss texture. Um, layer here and you can access that if you if you double click a layer to open up the layer styles uh, panel for a, a, a layer and you add some effects and you hit OK, uh, you can always come back to the exact same layer style that you added by selecting it from the um, drop down underneath that layer now that it has been applied. So I can double click this bevel and emboss and it will open this for me again and I can crank. I think what I want to do is come back to my texture. Ooh, wait a second. I want to leave it like that. I do want to bring the depth of everything down. However, I wonder, oh, it's size that I want to bring down. Cause I want this texture here. I want like a good amount of texture, but I don't want such a large edge around the edge of it. So I'm going to do it like that. That's kind of cool because it almost like it's and it's rigid, but it almost kind of gives me like a sea floor here, you know, and then I think I will also I'll grab all of these all of these um, lines um, and I will you could do a couple of different things here to make this look niftier. You could right click and you could convert to smart object and then you could double click it and you could throw a color overlay on that. Um, if you wanted to, you could do like sample this dark blue and then make it even more dark blue um, and do like a normal, there we go. So now these are all like a subtle blue. You could do that. Um, maybe we, I'm going to say, okay, but you could also come in with another clipping mask if you wanted to um, and do convert to, oh, I'm sorry, create clipping mask. Um, and you could grab uh, kind of just a lighter blue. And I should be, oh, I can't, I'm gonna convert this to a smart object. So when you have something that that's color is changed by a color effect, sometimes when you try to apply things over the top of that, it doesn't actually register quite well um, at uh, over the top of it. So what you can do is you can right click it and convert that to smart object. So if you wanna come back and edit all of the blending modes or um, all of the layer styles or things, uh, any effects that you've applied to it, you can also, let me pop myself over here. You can always come back to this layer, right click it, um, 
and say convert to layers um, and you'll have all of your layers right back uh, but for now I want to keep it as a smart object so I can edit it all together and I'm going to come in um, and add yeah there we go that's kind of cool um, maybe we'll grab one of these um, this is the if it'll hover over sometimes I forget the names of these gradients because there are quite a lot uh, but I'm going to grab this layer um, this gradient that allows me just to kind of put a bar um, in between here and I am going to do a little bit of that so it, it, it kind of adds a gradient bar in the center there. So it lets me kind of fade this because I know that this is darker. Um, I want this to be more of a mid-tone and then I have kind of a lighter thing here. So they're a little bit descending, you know? Um, and then what I would like to do is to come in with my text tool um, and drop in some text here. Um, and I am going to select Montserrat. I am going to grab like a semi-bold maybe, and I'm going to change the justification of my text. Um, and a lot of you might not use um, the different settings here for this, but I'm gonna write a line because I want to have this information kind of aligned against the edge over here because I won't really be able to line it up nice along the edge of our stuff here. I think I lost a little bit more texture in this bevel uh, than I thought by the way, now that I'm looking at it, let me come back in here and crank this up. I'm just going to go ahead. Yeah. I wonder why it kind of, let me see. Yeah, there we go. Weird that that kind of disappeared for a second there. Um, and I am going to, oops, kind of slot these down. I'm just going to duplicate control T or tr control J to duplicate these and control T just to bump them down. And I'm going to come in and just put my text um, along all of the areas where I know that I want to label them. Okay. Um, and how many minutes do we have? We've got like three minutes left. So I probably won't drop in the actual um, names of all of these right now only because I do want to have enough time to get into some more stuff. So we've kind of talked about the ocean levels, which are super, super cool. Um, I think I might also, maybe let's, let's turn this into a lighter color. Now, nah, maybe we won't do that. We'll leave that one. That's the last dark one. Um, and then I am going to duplicate this. Um, and then I'm going to show you kind of what I have cooked up for our, um, the freebies that I threw in there. I think I am going to noodle a little bit with this, um, this sand, but for now I'm going to leave it. You know, we've got like a pretty cool, uh, depth little graph thing going on here. Um, but another thing that would be cool to do is if you guys kind of jump into the create waves, uh, I just lost the word. Um, the CC library, <laughs> such an important phrase and I forget it. Um, if you jump into the CC library, there's tons of different images of deep sea creatures, of like mid-level creatures, tropical creatures, cold water creatures, all kinds of things. And so if you do some research on these creatures and where they come from, you can cut them out and place them um, onto your your little depth graph here and maybe name them, denote them and talk about why they are there. You know, add a little bit of pizzazz to this. Um, I have posted, as I showed you, I have posted um, a, let me open the Discord. I have posted a clownfish. I just thought, you know, if we're gonna talk about fish, I should probably throw a Nemo fish in there. And then the manta rays that I uh, illustrated. And you guys can feel free to just grab them and start tossing them into um, the the file if you like. If you want to use those, you can come in and 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 kind of cut out some of these images of like, especially these these. I'm gonna hold on. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna open this because I gotta see this. This is so cool. That is so neat grab this little guy and throw him in, in the down in the trenches, you know, or put him out. Um, he's probably more like an abyss kind of guy. He seems like more of an abyss ocean level kind of dude. And just start throwing him in there. Um, if you're interested to learn more about them, um, you can uh, and maybe put some information there. But one of the last things that I want to leave you with, because I did supply you with a Nemo fish, um, is I wanted to give you some clownfish facts before I leave. Would you folks like to uh, learn about clownfishes before I take off? Because we got about a minute and a half, and I got some I got some stuff cooked up for you. Um, so, 
<laughs> Let me see if I can come back here. So, clownfish. Everybody's like, oh, the Finding Nemo fish. It's, it's Nemo, it's Nemo's dad, all that good stuff. But the clownfish actually has a lot of different looks and descriptions it goes by. You know, a lot of ways that you can see a clownfish that most people really don't know about. This is the most popular look, I think, for a clownfish. Everybody sees this, oh, it's a clownfish, it's a clownfish, a clownfish. But a lot of you may be seeing clownfish and having no idea that you were actually looking at clownfish. Um, so this is a clownfish. A lot of people have seen um, this, as I said, but if I zoom out here... Oh! Look at all of these. Look at all of these fish. They are all clownfish. All of these. There is the Darwin Miss Bar, which is one of my favorite, 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 favorite. I like the Midnight, and I also like the Maroon ones and the Mocha ones, which are really cool. Uh, but they are all super cool. Look at the Mocha Storm. These are incredible. Um, and I hope that you folks will go maybe do some more research on clownfish because they're excellent little critters and creatures. They are super interesting, and there are so many different kinds. Uh, and I hope, I, I hope, I hope I blew somebody's mind just now with the amount of clownfish there are because they're awesome. But it is time for me to go because I don't want to get cut off. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see your ocean level um, uh, diagrams and graphs and things in the Discord. And I will talk to you folks a little later on when I post some new pro tips for you. All right. I'll see you folks next week. Adios, everybody.